there's four components of boundaries me mm -hmm. you we and they. and they okay yeah so the self-concept of me is you're essentially learning that i exist until you realize that you exist how can you have a boundary right because you don't even know what you need so a boundary is not a no don't do that bad thing to me you bad person Right. A boundary is what's your favorite but workout? At, what's your favorite? My favorite routine? workout is boxing. Yes. And when you said that, I just had a conversation with a friend of mine the other day. I'm like, I'm not happy at my gym. I'm going to go join the boxing gym a couple of blocks away because that's more of what I need. Nice. Yeah. So that would, that would be, yeah. Okay. Okay, normally, all right, we're gonna do another one after this. So my favorite type mm -hmm. of workout too is also kickboxing. Because, mm -hmm. oh, geez, I've never had such a snatched body. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And that, that strength the, that you feel. The, yeah, the twist of the turns. Okay, so we just expressed a boundary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Boundaries okay. are preferences. Hmm. If you live in a world of no, you will not do this bad thing to me. That's a world of, I'm right. You're wrong. I'm the good person right now. You're the bad person right now. What we, what we want to get to is win-win. Okay. How do we okay. both, and, and even when there come those core differences where there is no way for me to do like good example, my boyfriend, he hates, Oh, let me explain it in the way I'm trying to teach you. His preferred way of listening to music is just always new songs. Mm -hmm. New music, he'll like listen to all the Radiohead, loves it on shuffle. But then mm -hmm. after he's listened to all of his songs at once, then he wants to find a new person. Okay. That's a preference. Okay. Uh, my preference is, oh, I love finding one song and I will play that bad boy on repeat. And I just love it. And then, mm -hmm. the, and then there'll be a moment, sometimes it's twice, sometimes it's two hours, sometimes it's two weeks, sometimes it's two months. I'll be like, all right, I'm done with that song. What's my next song? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's a clash. That's, I can't listen to music the way I like listening to it. And he listens to music that, the way that he likes doing it. So how do you navigate to and win? It's like, mm -hmm. uh, okay, is listening to music with your partner even important? To me, not at all. Um, if I ever do want to go to like a concert, I'll just go ask one of my girlfriends to go with me. That's not a significant thing in a way that I need to connect with my partner. For mm -hmm. him, music is actually a big deal to him. It is. So it's like, okay, well, if, and he loves going to live music. I don't like going. Mm. I get, I'm sensitive. I pick up a lot of information. So it's easy for me to get mm. overwhelmed. So it's like, mm. okay, I see that you like that. Um, I'll go ahead and do that. But can you scope out the venue beforehand and just make sure it's one that treats the music like entertainment versus blasting your ears? And he was, mm -hmm. yeah, I could, yeah, that would be fine. If I ever just want the really loud music, like I could, that I can do on my own. You see how we just navigated to win-win? Mm -hmm. not okay. you're stupid for wanting to listen to a song a new one always like well you're mm -hmm. done with the same one over and over yeah 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 so win-win yeah. is like the there's that's a new concept that you're going to develop and all relationships should feel that way okay okay and so that's why no don't do so that both back. people's needs are getting met just yep. not in the same way yep and sometimes you'll you will just realize that person can't meet that need you'll get a friend in um, your life partner, because I bet a lot of this is about four years about getting love in, um, mm -hmm. is just 70% of your needs, right? If they, mm -hmm. if they meet less than 70% of your needs, then you're not going to turn to them. So, right. If they meet 50% of your needs, you're going to turn to 50% of the time. That's not a life partner. If they meet 70% right. of your needs, like I, 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 you're a very mature person. So you can identify, okay, they just can't meet that need of mine. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, doesn't mean I don't appreciate that 70%. Um, okay, so you're just looking for someone 70%. Um, I lost my train of thought. Anger, oh, boundaries. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes there are a, hey, that is just not something I could tolerate. Let me give you an example. For me, I had heavy gaslighting growing up. Mm -hmm. um, do you know what gaslighting is? I know the term, but then I know it as... Um... I know it in a previous life as someone gassing you. So I guess gaslighting oh. is someone that is. Uh... They deny your experience. So let me try to do it. 
Okay. So that win-win, that's called mm -hmm. emotionally available. That's here's person A, here's person B. We both have a different experience. Okay, are you, this will really, are you okay with talking about sex? Is that an okay yes. topic? Okay, mm -hmm. so my boyfriend and I, um, we just recently, it was like at the end of the night and he just looked at me and he was like, I always have to initiate sex and I do most of the work. And I look at him like, but you start it so late. I'm so tired. And I'm a morning person. After 8 p.m., I'm shutting down. I'm winding down. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you mm -hmm. want to have sex, heck yeah. I'm like, play with me, touch me, all the orgasm. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be that we. Yeah. yeah. We're, yeah. 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 And he just went, but do you see how it's me putting all the effort? And that's always about you, about you, about you, about you. And I was like, wait. No, when we have sex, it's about you because I don't even want to be having it when we have it. Sure, I, mm -hmm. I'm, I have figured out my body that I can allow the orgasms to roll. Mm -hmm. And he just like was so stumped. He's like, what are you talking about? We had all that buildup all day. And I was like, no, we have no buildup. That's like <laughs> to me, like at night when like you come and touch my belly and I look at you and I go, what, really? He goes, yeah, we've had so much buildup. Why would you not? I'm like, you spring sex on me all the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We, no one was wrong. No one. It was just, wait, what? Curiosity. What? You feel mm -hmm. like I spring sex on you? I was like, bro, how do you feel we're doing build up? Please enlighten me. He told me, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, if you want to do that for me, I would need blah, 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 blah. That's a bound. That's a, I would need this, this, this. These are the preferences I have. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. Okay. So emotionally okay. available. It, it, when you're looking mm -hmm. for a partner, it's just, can he have his experience of the event, articulate it, express it, express what he needs, share his emotions? Can he also then hold space for me having my own experience? And then can he hear, can I articulate my needs, my wants, how I feel and what I would like to see different? And most of the time he goes, here's what was wrong. Here's what I would need. Well, here was my point of view. Here's what was wrong. Here's what I need. Once you both can express that, then it's, then it's called conflict intimacy. Then it's like, oh, whoa, we have all, we have our board and we have all the pieces out there. Some of the stuff that you're like, well, here's my need. Here's what I needed. It's just going to vanish once you hear the other person's point of view. Mm -hmm. so, oh, I, you know, like, oh, Thomas, fine. You feel, I, you know, I don't actually need flowers, but I need something to show. I need something that's like sweetness, something that's this. And he went, oh, okay. I was like, can you think about that? And maybe come up with things that you like to do in that category. Mm -hmm. like, okay. 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 So now let's go, let's go back to boundaries and preferences. So does that mm -hmm. make sense? Oh, sorry. Let me explain sometimes when it is appropriate to do that. That's not acceptable. So gaslighting is when they just deny your experience. And so one example, I could kind of try to make it personal to you is you're saying your mom was always yelling and screaming, but you never knew why. And she was like screaming through you. If later you were to say, after she calms down, maybe you had to calm her down too. And you were parentified and you had to take care of her emotional needs. Maybe not. But if you were to share mom, I like, I felt really scared. Why did you feel scared? You're the one that hurt me. You should have just, that's gaslighting. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. completely okay. denying your experience. And then there's, there's different forms of it. They could try to alter it like a, no, but you should have loved me. Like, why didn't you come and hug me? Like, why should I reassure you? Like, you shouldn't have been scared. You should have been thinking about me. Mm -hmm. okay. So I had heavy gaslighting. Okay. So I can relate to that. Okay. Probably. This course, is, yeah. this course is built for gaslighters. And people don't know about me. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So I, I experienced it to a huge degree. So to me, I am so sensitive to that now that like a conversation I'm about to have with him is, um, I don't want to talk too much on it, but you need to understand that for the context. I'm, I am going to go home to visit my folks January 5th to like January 10th. Um, I just put my holiday travel later. My parents aren't major players in my life, so I'm, I don't do the holidays with them. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to be screamed and yelled at on the holidays, but I'll January 5th, I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he just kind of, we've been talking about it for like the last month, month and a half. Um, and it's been kind of wishy-washy, but then there was a, oh, my girlfriend also wants to go to Mexico. He's like, I want to go to Mexico. I'll go there. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then enough time has passed. 
And I went, you know, I'd actually really like you to be there. But now the flight tickets are like twice as much. Mm. And he has always stayed consistent of he would rather not go during winter. He hates the cold. And I went, but my uncle's going to take us ice fishing. It'll be a good experience. It'll be really bonding. My uncle will love it. You get something new. And he's like, oh, my God, that just sounds miserable. This is why they meet 70% of your needs. So I want a guy who's adventurous and will try new things. Yes, it doesn't mean he needs to do it 100% of the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can allow myself to feel disappointment without shaming him, without making him bad, without making him wrong. Yeah. Okay. And it was just, oh, well, I do feel disappointed. Like, but that's okay. And then I was like, well, now I'm rethinking if I even want you to go to Colorado. I don't know if I want you to do something where you're going to be miserable the whole time, especially when you're meeting my folks for the first time. Um, so that's why it was it was heavy wishy washy. Um, mm -hmm. Because of the cold, he was very consistent on. His other reason for not going was, um, ah, but I've already he's taken this whole week off work. He's like, I'm already taking a week off work. I just don't know if I could take another week off so close. But yet the trip with Mexico when one of my girlfriends is going, it's like we can go. When do you want to go? Okay, he is available not available for that. Yes, yes. <laughs> Right. So I have all sorts of emotions that I need to process because you could see like, oh, you want to go to my girlfriend goes, but not to meet my family. There's a whole module in there about how to self-validate your own emotions. Right. Because I don't okay. sometimes it's like, hey, that kind of like hurts my feelings a little, but mm -hmm. I don't need to sit here and explain all my 50 emotions. I'm like, I'll just be like, yo, I'm getting jealous. You'll hang out with my girlfriend. And you said you'd mm -hmm. cover the hotel. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. yeah when it was just going to be you and me I had to get a hotel for like 150 night but if she wants to go we'll do a 300 night hotel like I'm jealous yeah. yeah so that one was a big way to talk about all the others I went and just identified my emotions and validated them myself validation simply means I feel angry and I understand why when someone else gives it to you it's a I can understand why you don't see the world crisply and why you've been emotionally cut off I can understand that based on someone's yelling and screaming emotions are bad you shut off yeah so that that's all validation is is okay someone either someone else or you being able to go oh I feel sad oh I feel frustrated I feel disappointed a simple emotion Mm -hmm. not oh I feel this because of my trauma and this because of that so when you did that it reminded me of this that is not validation that is mm -mm. trauma dumping yeah yeah okay there's a lot of that too <laughs> yeah yeah so so for that it's just well I'll teach you more about that in future sessions right there's only okay. how much we could do in one 